Hey there, I'm Ella from Spline. You can easily make your designs come to life with a loop animation. It's a fun way to give your design a little bit of a dynamic spin, whether that's to add some pizzazz to your logo presentation or to show off your design in the 3D space. We'll walk you through the basics to create a loop animation using simple examples. All right, let's dive in. First, let's quickly learn how to create a rotation animation like this using this coin-like object. It is something very cool and basic that you can apply to logos or icons. Right now, my pivot point is on one side. The origin of our pivot point can affect our animation, so it's really important to pay attention to where it is on our objects. So we can move our pivot point here to the center and we can do this really simply by just creating a new group. And how we can do that is by selecting our object and grouping it with Command G. When you group an object, the pivot point automatically moves to the center. Say you want to move your pivot point though, this is also super easy. All you need to do is click on the group while holding Option. But for now, we will keep it in the center. Now let's start the animation. I'm going to create a new state and with this state, I'm going to change the rotation and on the Y axis, let's change that to 360. So I have my Y rotation at zero in the base state while in the state, I have it at 360 to create that full spin. And now if we create a new start event and add the transition, we want the animation to be constant. So let's select linear here. And in the duration, let's use two. And in the loop, select infinite. Now let's go to play mode. And done. See, this is a really easy way to create this infinite rotating effect. You can apply this with several objects or designs with more details. Now in this second example, I will apply two loop animations to the same object. I want this object to not only rotate, but also move up and down to give me this feeling that it's floating or levitating. So in this group, I have my cube with this rotating animation. And so to apply another animation, one way that we can do this is create another group to nest this rotating cube in. So on our new group, we can apply our animation. On the new group, let's select it and create a new state. In these states, instead of rotating, I'm going to move them up and down a little bit. All right, let's create our transition and adjust our speed. And I'm going to set loop to infinite like we did before. If I go to play mode, yes, my animation is there, but once it reaches the end, it starts from the top and it doesn't seem to cycle. So what we can do is go back and make some adjustments. So I wanna to return to my transition here and just below loop is the cycle option. And here I'm going to select ping pong. I'm going to adjust the speed a little bit here to make the movement faster and done. With ping pong, I can keep this in a loop. One last adjustment we can do is change this to two instead of linear and use ease and out. This will make the movement have more of a subtle finish, which I think is perfect for this design. All right, we're done. That's two animations applied to one object. In addition to animating the rotation, we can animate other parameters such as scale. I'm going to select the sphere, create a second state, and here I'm going to simply adjust the size by selecting the sphere and holding shift option to make it smaller. Again, I created a start event and transition as in the previous examples. Hmm, I'm going to keep it on ease and out and let's set the duration to two seconds and set it to infinite loop. And can you guess what's missing? Like in the previous example, we need to go to cycle and select ping pong.
Hmm, this is a pretty relaxing scene, don't you think? In this example, I want to show you how you can duplicate the same animated object to create an animated composition. I took the same coin that I used before, but I've changed the colors and adjusted the parameters of the ring value here to open up this hole in the center. And as well, to make this split effect happen, I just adjusted the value in the angle here to 180. Now we have this cool kind of arch effect. Now I want to make this like a loader and I want it to have a spinning movement. So this time I will adjust the Z axis. Go to state and in the Z axis, I'm going to add 360 degrees into the value. And now I'm just going to quickly create a start event and transition. Now for the easy part, all we have to do now is duplicate this same object by hitting Command D and change its position. Then I'm going to right click here and select option flip X. Okay, now I'm going to adjust the position a little more. Let's create this effect where it's more of a loading loop. So what we can do in the second copy is reverse the rotation. To do this in base state, I'm going to change the value to 360 while in state, I'm gonna set it to zero. So we're just doing the opposite on this one. And look at that, isn't that cool? By simply doing this, the direction of the animation is changed. It appears as though these arches are meeting each other rather than moving in the same direction. And I think that creates such a cool effect. And you can explore by duplicating your elements and creating animations like these. You can create a loop animation like this by making your objects align to a path. For this example, I will use this object. Select the object, go to the option, align to path, and there you can select your path. Let's create a new state. And in base state, we'll keep the offset at zero and slide at one, while in state, we'll adjust the slide to zero. I'll create my start event and infinite loop again. All right, looking good. But what if we want to add more or duplicate this object to follow the same path, but from a different starting point? All we need to do is select our object, duplicate it with Command D, and then adjust the offset value to give it a different starting point. Here, I'm going to adjust it to 0.36 and ensure I have the same offset value in the state and base state. Since I've duplicated it, I already have my animation ready. So all we need to do now is hit play mode and we're done. You can repeat this process by duplicating objects and changing their offset. And you know what, for fun, let's just quickly do that now. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Oh, and before I forget, here is a super quick tip. If you open the export panel in the play settings and scroll all the way down, you're going to find an option called animated turntable. You can enable this by clicking here, and then all you have to do is adjust the speed and the direction to your liking. This will automatically create this looping rotation for the entire composition of your scene. It's a really easy way to add this cool looping effect. 
which can be a great way to show off your design. All right, that takes us to the end of this tutorial. We learned how to create a looping animation for our objects, how to add a second animation, how we can duplicate our animated objects to create more of an interesting scene. As well, we took a look at how to align objects to a path. And don't forget that quick tip on the animated turntable trick in the play settings. And all of your spline scenes are portable. And what we mean by that is you can create these cool animated scenes that work really well on your website and even on the mobile version of your website. Or you can make animated scenes for your iOS projects. If you're looking for more inspiration, our community is brimming with creativity and we've got some spotlighted animations in the description below. So make sure to check those out. Thanks for tuning into this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.